top 10 free add-ons in Blender that you can download right now with a bonus three at the end. So stay with me. So the first one, we're gonna be looking at Simple Audio Visualizer Install. And I'm just gonna delete that default cube. Let's split the screen, come into here, and we will go into the graph editor. And over here, we will see Simple Audio Visualizer. Let's grab an audio file. Let's just select this one. We can select the number of cubes and only go 20, that's fine. Which way we want the animation to be. And I'm just gonna go Create Visualizer. Let's give that a moment. And then if we go press play, we can see that it's bopping along. I probably should actually play the audio. So if you actually want to listen to the audio in Blender, let's open that up, click on the, that thing into video sequencer. Let's add a sound. Oh gosh, what was this thing called? Final boss, add, please don't be loud. And uh, there we go, we got sound visualizing. Thank you, Polyford. Polyford? Yeah, I was right, Polyford. Fjord, Polyfjord. So the next add-on is Edge Flow. Now, this is something we've been building on live streams. So consider subscribing just so you can follow along with uh, how this is going because I live stream every Sunday. Edit preferences. In the add-on, I've got the Edge Flow enabled. Another free add-on. All these add-ons are free. What I can do now is if I just go in solid mode, we can see that this curve here is a little bit rough as guts. It's not very straight. But what we can do is I can come in, select all these, right click, and we can go set flow to curve. And so what this has done is this is now evenly spaced each section. So in the bottom left here, we've got mix. So I can go back to how it was, or we can evenly space it. But then using the set flow curve, we can change over how much it kind of bends, how much it straightens out to try and clean up that line, which I think is pretty stinking cool. Actually, while, while I'm here, right click, mark sharp. Nope. Uh, there are other options. Oh, that's why it looks weird. There we go, that's better. There are other options. We can go right click, set flow. We can go linear and it will draw a straight line amongst, taking into account the start point and the end point. And then we can obviously go in between the two by moving our little bar in the bottom left. Then with the option of set flow, what it's gonna do is kind of create almost a straight line in between all these. Once again, everything is controllable in the menu on the bottom left. Tension, obviously we can change. Whoops, that's kind of like the spacing. I might actually expand on this add-on in another video, but just know that this is something that's available. So the next one here that we're looking at is Myo3 UV. It's a UV tool. And if we open up UV editing, this is my dream UV texture that I use for everything. Open up Myo, and now we can go ahead, select some of our pieces. Uh, it's been dream UV wrapped. Let's just go angle based. So if I want kind of like this edge straight, as in along the Z axis, Y axis, with this edge selected, I can press A to select everything. And then we can kind of click on this aligned edge loops. And now everything is vertical. Probably do the same thing if I did the bottom here, Select all and align, oops, this way, silly Marco, this one. You can see how we've straightened out all these lines as well. So this is something that's a very useful, especially if you're doing UV unwrapping um, onto other objects and you need those straight lines, works perfect. This is, this is actually really good for kind of like Ian Hubert's um, art style. Actually, now that we're actually talking about Dream UV, this is a free add-on, but it's not part of the get extensions list. It's on a separate link. And there is a link in the description. So enabling this gives us some really cool functions. Um, if you have a texture set, and there is one that comes by default with Blender, uh, sorry, with the add-on, I've kind of got my own setup here and I've got a myriad of them on Patreon and Gumroad and such. But if we have a look here, this is what the texture looks like. And if I select our mesh that we want to UV unwrap, actually we'll select everything. I'm gonna press N to bring up our side panel. I have kind of like our plate here, which is selected and diced up. And what's gonna happen is the UV is gonna try and match those spaces. So for instance, now if I select these panels and we just go hotspot, it is now UV unwrapped according to that there. So if we see, we've got edgeware on all the edges, just like we have here. 
If we go into UV unwrapping, UV editing, sorry, Marco, come on, put your socks up. This is why predominantly all the pieces are fitting into these squares and rectangles. So this is a very simple way of UV unwrapping, something that I do, um, and it's very cheap in terms of resource intensive on the PC. Speaking of ugly materials, node arrange. This is where we can select all our nodes. That's the word, good job. Arrange selected, and it puts it into nice, pretty layout rather than crud everywhere. That's it, that's all the add-on does. It's pretty handy. Now the next one's a bit of a random one that I came across, the Ikea browser. What do you think that is? It is literally a browser for Ikea. So of course, not every object is going to be on here, but if we go looking for, I don't know, beds and mattresses, let's, let's do a bed, just a random thing. And, oh yeah, let's grab this one, the brim knees. Let's dump it into there. Let's press enter and see if it comes up. And do we have it? There it is. Import that sucker. And that's just the base. Ah. <laughs> That's a terrible example. Let's build in something else. Uh, let's go G. There we go. And going to rendered view, we can see that it's all rendered and it looks delish. This is actually really, really nice. Ah, look at the quality on that. It is pretty cool. But that's how you can bring IKEA furniture into Blender. I mean... Now, I could go through the Bagger Pie add-on. However, I've got a full video on that one, so there's a link in the description. There is a link in the description for that one, but that's got a long list of features. Now, the next three add-ons you should have installed by default. Edit Preferences. We have the Bull Tool, and what that does is if I do Shift D, I'm just going to Edit Mode, Control B. Let's give that a bit of bevelness. With our first object selected, and then what we're cutting into, I can press Control Numpad minus, and you can see how we've used it as a cutter. If I do Control Shift Numpad, it'll make the cut auto apply and clear out our cutter. Now this goes for Control Numpad plus, which makes them joined. Control Numpad multiply, which is the intersect, and Control Numpad slash, which is just slashing a gap in there. So the bull tool is something very simple. It's almost like a hard ops alternative or even a machine alternative, but not really, because those things have like a whole bunch of things that you can do there. But anyway, bull tool by default. Um, and what I actually can do here, just while I'm here, it's gonna bevel, <laughs> 0.001, and then we will copy to select it. And there we go, we've kind of created this nice little bevel. That's cool. And then we've got separate pieces. So if we really want to, we could even push this in. Yeah, nice. There we go, get it a little bit bigger bevel. So the next one we're looking at is loop tools. We had a bit of a discussion on this one last night on the live stream, but this has a whole bunch of features. So for instance, if I've got kind of like a really ugly um, edge, want to smooth it out, I can go right click loop tools and we can go relax. And we can just relax it a few times. And you can see how we've got a nice even curve there now based off what we've got selected. The other cool one is, is if I were to select our surface, right click, subdivide, 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 I can increase my selection in here, right click loop tools, and we can add in a circle and then very quickly add it in the circle. How cool is that one? I do have a longer video, a bit of an older one, I'll link that one in the description if you want more information, but I might do a more in-depth tutorial around using the loop tools as well. The next add-on is the Node Wrangler. This should be by default. But if I clear all this, and with the principal BDSS, and with the principal BSDF selected, I can press Control Shift T. I can find a pack of textures that um, align to each other. So roughness, normals, um, color, ambient. They're eh, not ambient, but whatevs. And displacement. I can now go principal texture. And this will add in our material all connected into wherever it needs to go. So obviously the normal is plugged into the normal. Uh, displacement goes into our displacement, so on and so forth. And that is done automatically. Now, if obviously, if I just want to go one material, I can press Control T, and that'll allow me to add in whatever. 
grunge mat. What is that? <laughs> now, funnily enough, there is actually a massive list of things you can do with Node Wrangler, uh, but I don't use them. I just use the Control Shift T thing. Now the bonus add-ons. The first one is the Ant Landscape. Delete, Shift A, Mesh Landscape. And then if we have a look in the bottom view, oh, go away. You can see that we've got a list of options to create a bit of a landscape. Um, if we go into the noise area, we've got various things. No, we don't. If we come up into opera, op, operator presets, then we can go like mountain one, uh, the dunes. We can make a bit of a cliff. And then we have all these options. If we want to multiply um, by two to give it extra geometry on all sides. Now you can see that we've created a very quick cliff face and then you can go about texturing it however you want. There is a video if you want on using uh, the normal map. Now the last two go hand in hand, extra curve objects, extra mesh objects. So if I go mesh down the bottom here, we've got extras. We've got kind of like a rock generator. We have a beam builder so if, and then we go in the bottom left that we can change the profiles to, you know, like an eye beam or whatever. Go away. My favorite one is the honeycomb. So this is where we can go ahead and build up a bit of a honeycomb as the word honeycomb represents. And then obviously, yeah, we could change all the settings like that. Mm, ooh, still plating. That'd be good on a walkway. But also if we go into the curve menu, we've got knots, spirals, profiles, simple stuff, curly stuff. So that's our 13 blender add-ons, 10 plus three. Let me know if there's an add-on that you use that I didn't put in so I can put in for next time. Like and subscribe. See you later.